Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about what is now officially Tropical Storm Claudette. There's a lot of impacts to go over, and now it's going to span across multiple states, so stay tuned for all of that information. <music> Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this one will regain tropical storm status offshore of the East Coast, or do you think this one is going to not really reform at any point? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at our satellite imagery, and I really wish this one was hitting a little bit later, because then we would be able to see some satellite imagery and give you guys some information before it reaches onshore, but at this point, most of the impacts are already underway. Uh, as you can see, a lot of those taller clouds are over Mississippi, Alabama, and then even the panhandle of Florida by this point. Even Louisiana most mostly isn't really dealing with any of those tall clouds any longer. Clearly, this low pressure center is located somewhere in between Mississippi and Louisiana, is my guess, or maybe even a little bit further eastward than that. Uh, but as of about 60, which translates to perhaps about 2 a.m. or so, this morning, it was all the way near the coast of Louisiana. So this one is actually racing northeastward. Uh, and here is our cone forecast. This is going to be the forecast from the National Hurricane Center. And this one is as of 4 a.m. And as you can see, it's expected to maintain its tropical storm status even as it moves in through Mississippi. Pretty quickly becoming a tropical depression by about 1 a.m. today over central Alabama, then a uh, post-tropical depression until it reaches about the coast of North Carolina. All right, and that's going to be by about 1 p.m. on Monday. And then afterwards, after that point, where you can see it regains that tropical status and becomes a tropical storm by about 1 a.m. on Tuesday or even earlier, uh, and then a post-tropical storm as it reaches the Atlantic coast of Canada. So they might get a second impact here from a tropical system, a uh, back-to-back. They had Tropical Storm Bill hit up there and now possibly Claudette is going to be making its way up there as well. Super interesting and obviously back-to-back -back storms isn't good. Uh, so we're going to hope that you guys uh, don't deal with too many severe impacts up there. Here's our probability of tropical depression over the next three days. That's Saturday through Tuesday. And as you can see, we have a 90 to 100% chance throughout all of these darker red regions, uh, basically from Mississippi all the way through South Carolina and North Carolina, and then all the way up through almost to the Atlantic coast of Canada, like I said. So this one is expected to at least maintain that tropical depression status throughout its entire uh, life, basically. And then we can see probability of tropical storm here basically peaks offshore of South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia as a 90 to 100% chance as well for these regions. So this one is expected to be a tropical storm, almost very high certainty to say the least, offshore of the East Coast. Uh, for a certain time frame at least. Now here's the probability of hurricane status and as it gets it's 0 to 10%. So they are very specific here. They think it, there's almost cer it's almost certain that it's going to become a tropical storm according to the European model once again, but it is almost certain that it will not become a hurricane. So this is a very pinpoint prediction here from the European model and that is increasing my confidence significantly. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to move on and take a look at that spaghetti model guidance, even the intensity guidance as well, and then we're going to start talking all about impacts. How much wind, how much rain, when the wind will be there, uh, storm surge, things of that nature, even the flooding risk. We're going to take a look at all of those things in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at the GEFS model guidance, and this is going to be our GFS ensemble model. Uh, and as you can see, this one is expected to move across the Gulf states and then out through possibly Virginia or North Carolina uh, as a, you know, at th what time frame were we talking about? Monday, Tuesday time frame is when it should be offshore of the East Coast. This GFS ensemble model is very far northward compared to the other models because as we take a look at the European ensemble model, you can see this one takes it offshore as of the same time frame, but it's offshore of North Carolina and then it's well offshore after that point becomes a stronger low pressure center as well. Sub uh, 1,000 millibar low pressure center offshore of the East Coast. Super interesting there. And then here is that Canadian ensemble model's spaghetti model guidance. And as you can see, it expects this one to move offshore of North Carolina and Virginia as well. Uh, staying pretty close to the Northeast, potentially, the Northeast Coast. That's why I kept that possible in the cone on the thumbnail. So that is a possibility at this point. Uh, but generally, it ex is expected to be pretty well offshore of the East Coast and then possibly going to hit Atlantic Canada after that point as a stronger system. That could be the strongest time frame of this storm is offshore of the East Coast, actually. 
Now here's all the models put together and as you can see, this is exactly what I was talking about when I said uncooked spaghetti versus cooked spaghetti. This is definitely a case of uncooked spaghetti. Look at how tight that, that range of models is. It basically takes it right offshore of Virginia and North Carolina and then they go straight for Nova Scotia. Uh, so this is a very specific spaghetti model forecasting compared to what we were looking at maybe four or five days ago. This is night and day. Uh, you guys can compare and contrast, but you know what I'm talking about. Here's the intensity guidance, and as you can see, it's expected to go sub-tropical storm status and then back up into tropical storm status at about hour 72.84. That is when it will be offshore of the East Coast. So this is that uh, up, down, up, and then down again uh, type look, and that's obviously to be expected. It goes down when it's over land, then it goes up when it's over the water. It's that simple. Very, very simple, actually. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to begin to finally talk about impacts. Now here is the probability of tropical storm force winds according to the National Hurricane Center. And as you can see, it's a 90% plus chance there in that purple shade. Uh, but the two green shades is only about 5 to 20% chance there for North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia. I think that chance is significantly going to go up. Uh, the National Hurricane Center likes to play it very safe beyond like day one uh, so that that's why it's not looking like it's actually going to look because they're not really making an opinion here. Now most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds as you can see for areas like South Carolina and North Carolina that would be at about Sunday 8 p.m. and then Monday 8 a.m. for very far eastern North Carolina and possibly eastern Virginia then it'll be offshore by Monday 8 p.m. and then would be reaching Canada by you know, Tuesday potentially. Now, the thing I find funny here is the National Hurricane Center is keeping this one way, way, way offshore, not really acknowledging the possibility of it kind of scraping along the East Coast. They love to go with the, the least impactful solution in the long range. You know, on this channel, like we do really keep all the options open. Uh, so it's just not really how I do things. Obviously, they're a, a government related a weather agency so that's a completely different thing and they have to really 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 be careful what they do all the options on the table and that's why when you see my cone forecast I keep the cone so wide because if I see one model taking it outside of where a majority of the models go I'm keep I'm I'm taking my cone where the one model goes so I'm keeping it as spread as the models are because if a model takes it somewhere in my opinion that is a possibility that's how I look at it if it's possible I want you guys to know about it that's how I feel all right, now here is the basically wind forecast. So this is showing you where tropical storm force winds have happened. So it's not a forecast, actually, it's in the past. But we've had tropical storm force winds throughout all of these yellow and orange areas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. There, Here's the storm surge forecast, so one to two feet there uh, for some of the more western regions, then two to three feet there for a lot of uh, Louisiana there, especially on the very southern coast there. Uh, and then we see one to two feet there. And then two to three, and then one to two. So you you got to just find your coastline, but generally it's about two to three feet maximum here in a lot of these regions, and then mostly one to two feet for most areas there, uh, especially on the outer sides of everything. Here is the rainfall forecast according to the National Hurricane Center, and as you can see in the lighter green, we have one to two inches; darker green, two to four inches; yellows are four to six inches; the orange there is six to ten inches of rainfall. So that is going to be the more major flooding potential risk. Uh, here is the actual flood risk. And as you can see, we have a uh, 5% chance, which is a marginal risk there in the green. We have a slight risk of flooding there in the yellow. And then we have a moderate risk of flooding there in the red. So that's going to be mostly for the panhandle of Florida, a lot of Alabama, and then a lot of Georgia as well. Now for today's confidence tab, we have upgraded finally to a 6 out of 6. This storm is already underway. We feel very confident in these impacts because they're over the next couple of days. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that this storm will become a tropical storm in the first place? Because it was not a tropical storm yet. It was a potential tropical cyclone. And Jonathan Shapiro said, I think that this storm will definitely become a tropical storm before it makes landfall, but it won't be very strong. I'd say 50 miles per hour max. Uh, and that was a good guess there. We definitely did become a tropical storm before reaching land. So really, really good comment of the day there.
Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lerla the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary's, John Coulisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Cronenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting Patreon page, uh, patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Firms 1 and Catbite as well. You can find that one next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button to help that YouTube algorithm out. Leave a comment down below to help me out as well. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.